Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a traditional Mexican birria. I'm gonna show you how to perfect your consomme and how to keep your tacos crunchy. Now, a lot of you might get a little bit worried about making this recipe, don't. I'm gonna walk you through step by step and I'm also gonna be sharing best practices because I've been working on this particular recipe probably my whole life and I'll tell you a little bit more in the video, but first we have to go over the ingredients. For this delicious recipe, you'll need five pounds of lamb, two pounds of beef cheek, 10 guajillo chiles, two dried chipotles, four roasted tomatoes, one roasted onion, eight garlic cloves, six cups of water, three tablespoons of coarse sea salt, six bay leaves, half a tablespoon of ginger powder, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, one and a half tablespoons of allspice, one tablespoon of marjoram, one tablespoon of Mexican oregano, half a tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of instant decaffeinated coffee, half a block of Ibarra chocolate, and half a cup of pineapple vinegar. To your blender, you wanna add your chiles guajillo, chipotle peppers, roasted garlic, roasted onions, one large bay leaf, powdered ginger, two tablespoons of salt, instant decaffeinated coffee. You guys put caffeine there and your grandma eats it. Don't, don't come talk to me about that. <laughs> Be worried if the kids get a hold of that. Black pepper, marjoram, Mexican oregano, allspice, ground cumin, Ibarra chocolate, pineapple vinegar, and if you don't have pineapple vinegar, which is the best for this recipe, you can use apple cider vinegar. And in my case, my chiles were cleaned. I have this broth right here that has been hydrating our chiles guajillos and our chipotle peppers, and that's the liquid that I'm gonna be using. So you can use either water or some clean chili broth. And here's a little secret tip to enhance your birria flavor and give it that true, authentic Mexican flavor. You're gonna need a little bit of tequila. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Make sure to add it to your blender and blend until smooth. And boom, done. Let's season our lamb. Once your ingredients are nice and blended, you're gonna set aside two and a half cups. You're gonna add your tomatoes and you're gonna blend again until smooth and that should only take you about 20 seconds. But if you're not using a high powered blender, it might take you a little bit longer and that's okay. Now you're gonna take your beautiful piece of lamb and you're gonna make sure that everything is patted down and dried. You're gonna do the same with your beef cheeks. And you don't have to use beef cheek for this recipe, but I like it because it releases enough of the fattiness that we love when we need to make our birria quesa tacos. Gorgeous, gorgeous, just like my beautiful sister, everybody. What? <laughs> Thank you. I have about one tablespoon of coarse sea salt here, and we're gonna start seasoning our protein. You're gonna take your bay leaves and place them into the same marinating pot. And now you're gonna drizzle your protein with your delicious sauce. One of the tips that I'm gonna share with you is before you marinate, you have to check the temperature of your sauce. If it seems a little bit warm, then you wanna place it in your refrigerator for a little bit before you add it to your protein because that'll help you spoil your food quickly and that's not what you wanna do. You wanna shine with your family because this is such a sacred dish that everybody's gonna be talking about it. So if anybody's gonna talk about you, I want it to be good things. Now with the remaining sauce, you're just gonna pour over and you're gonna allow this to marinate for a minimum of four hours. 
and it's gonna be best overnight or 24 hours, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let this marinate in my refrigerator for 24 hours because I wanna shine, baby. I wanna shine with my family. I want everybody to fall in love with lamb birria as much as you love the beef. And if it's gonna be a recipe, it's gonna be this one. And I just give it a nice little press like this so it's nice and tight. And I'll see you guys in 24 hours. And this is what your marinade looks like the next day. Now what we have to do is we have to transfer it into a bigger pot. The pot I'm using today is an Alpine pot. It's a 13 quart pot and it's perfect for this recipe. If you guys are looking for this pot, you can find it in the description area where my sister Cloud will link it for you. Oh, it smells delightful in here. <laughs> yeah, it smells so good. You're gonna pour all that sauce right over the top. Now the sauce that we had left over that we blended with the tomatoes, I placed them in a little container in my refrigerator and now we're gonna pour it right into this pot. Sauce. <laughs> if you guys want to be marinated in this sauce, let us know in the comments. I'll join you. Oh, it smells so good. Our proteins are going to release so much delicious juices, but we still need to help them out. So we're going to pour our water until it covers our protein completely. And that's the thing. You need enough broth for your BBR ramen. Mm. Now it's time to bring this pot to a boil. If you ended up using a piece of lamb that has the bone in, you don't need this part. But if you don't have a bone in lamb like my piece, then I suggest you get some beef bones and add them into your pot for a more delicious and luxurious flavor when you're dipping your tacos. You can't miss it, you're gonna love this. Some of you are probably wondering, Steph, where are your carrots to your famous birria? It's gonna be up to you. A lot of people don't like it when you make it traditional, but if it's just you at home and your family, you guys know, add some carrots. It's gonna enhance the flavor of your broth, not just with that bone, but it just really combines so well with all the spices and the seasonings that we're using. And our family recipe calls for carrots. Yeah, our family <laughs> recipe does call for carrots, but if you guys want that flavor that I showed you initially, add them. Once your pot comes to a boil, you're gonna place it on a medium low heat. More on the medium side than the low side, okay? I don't know what kind of burners you're using at home, but that's my best advice I can give you. You're gonna place the lid over your pot. Make sure to leave a little crack. You don't want anything to boil over. And you're gonna to continue to cook for three hours to guarantee a nice, soft, tender, juicy birria. It's been about an hour and I'm gonna check the flavor in my broth. I'm gonna check if I need a little bit more salt, um, but you guys know me, I love chicken bouillon, especially with birria. So I'm gonna taste my birria, I'm gonna adjust my flavor, and I'm gonna let you know in the description area, under the ingredients, what my adjustments for the birria were. And as you can see, I did add a few carrots because my little guy, if there's no carrots in the birria, he doesn't want anything to do with that. And you want to ask the person that's cooking with you to taste because, you know, there's magic in the kitchen. There's a lot of love. So your favorite person that loves to sit there and cook with you, even if they're three or four or 76 or I can't say my sister's age, they're going to taste it and you guys can adjust together. I have trained you well. Thank you, sweetie. Let me blow on this for you, my sweetheart. Yes. Ew, nasty. <laughs> my germs. <laughs> my germs. <laughs> We're okay, guys. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I love Is that. Is that good? Yes. Okay. It's perfect. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Ooh. That's going to revive anyone. There's so much <laughs> nutrients in this broth when you have lamb and then we have all the fattiness from your, um, your beef cheeks. Oh, it's absolutely divine, and if I said divine, you guys are going to have to try this because it's like fine wine. <laughs> oh, just like you. Oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> Some of our friends have questions on what's on your refrigerator. Do you mind showing us? Um, the kid stuff? Yeah, let's see what's on my refrigerator, unless you guys want to see these curls that keep crowing because it's snowing today, but let's go. All right, what you got there, Mom? Okay, so let's talk about this. 
You're going to see one of these uh, commonly in a Mexican household, especially in Mexico, or if you're raised around the Mexican culture, you're going to have one of these. These are called a santoral. A santoral has a daily saint. So for example, if Cloud had a baby today, uh, come in close, Cloud, so you guys can see. This Why is Cloud? Because <laughs> I'm not having any more babies, guys. <laughs> so you would come here on uh, Sunday the 2nd, and it's Domingo de Ramos, Palm Sunday. And when you have Palm Sunday, um, you can name your child Francisco or Francisca. And for us, Ramos, that's, we're Ramos, so yep. it's fitting for us. <laughs> it is. Um, and if, for example, you wanted to have a baby on the 25th of April, then you can name that baby San Marcos or San Marcas. I don't know. What no, it sorry, be. sweetie, I already have a name. You're not renaming me. <laughs> so that's what this Santoral is. And where can you find these? Well, let me tell you. You can find it at your local meat market, your local Mexican grocery stores. I know that Cardenas, if you guys are familiar with that store, they do have these during the holidays. You're going to find these around December. And for me, Cloud was able to find one of these with the beautiful alcatraces in the back um, at our one at one of our local carnicerias, which is Carniceria Jalisco. Shout out to our one of our local markets. We love you guys. And yeah, that's what you have. And then you have my my mommy stuff here, Aww. my Valentine's Day card for my babies. And you guys don't need to know too much about all of the chore charts, but if you guys want, Cloud will link uh, this that goes on the refrigerator because that way, that way when my kids act like they didn't see the chore chart or they don't remember, it's right in front of the refrigerator, their favorite place. So, you know, mommies, you get what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Is that one of your favorite places too? Um, <laughs> this one, let me see, what's my favorite place? I'll tell you guys tomorrow. <laughs> And boom, done, our birria is ready. And there you have it, a beautiful, delicious birria cooked to perfection, ready for you to eat. As you can see here, the beef cheeks and our bones gave us enough of our fatty, delicious flavor that we need to make the best birria quesa tacos. And now I'm gonna show you how to keep your birria quesa tacos nice and crispy, no matter what kind of tortillas you're using. And now it's time to shred. I would love to tell you that I haven't had any pieces of this delicious lamb, but I'd be lying to you. I've already had a few pieces. We have indulged. Nice and tender. Birria, ooh. This is about to get real juicy. So just continue to shred, just like that. And Cloud's gonna put her camera down because she's really good at shredding. <laughs> You got it, dude. If you're gonna order these tacos anywhere, you're gonna order this particular cut as tacos de cabeza or tacos de cachete. My personal favorite. Yeah. The tacos de cabeza will bring me to tears. So if you guys see me crying today, no, <laughs> no, no, you're gonna know why. No crying today. Okay. <laughs> you already did tears that of joy. <laughs> tears of joy. And once you shred your birria, you can soak it with your bra. And this portion of birria we're going to be using for the quesa tacos. And the other portion over here is for those of you or us that enjoy it in a bowl with the tortilla to dip in. And don't sleep on these bones. There is bone marrow in there that's really good for you. And it's going to keep you looking super supple and juicy. Okay, we're going to go over the ingredients you need for your birria quesa tacos. You're going to need a delicious melty cheese. You can use mozzarella, you can use queso chihuahua. And as of lately, my sister found this private select Mexican blend. It says asadero Oaxaca and quesadilla that's going to melt to perfection to perfect your tacos. So what are we going to fill our tacos with? Cheese. We also have a beautiful bowl of cilantro and onions. And let's go ahead and get started. Wait, there's limes in there. <laughs> Cloud, that's for when you crisp up your taco and you just squeeze a little bit on the top or for your broth, which is what we're doing here. <laughs> Some of you are going to ask me about how many people will uh, this recipe feed. I'd say if you eat like me, maybe two. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I think a good 15 to 20 people if you stretch it a little bit, but if you need a feed 20 people, you can add an extra five pounds of your beef cheek 
or some lamb and then you know you're gonna have plenty even for the next day you know how i know everybody's gonna love this birria why because i've been a well you've known i've been a lamb birria hater my whole life <laughs> And I hate to admit it in front of you guys, but I am. I've never liked lamb birria from anywhere that I've ever had it. The only birria that I've liked is the one that I make at home. So how do I know that this is going to convince you guys? Because I've worked so hard on this recipe for you guys. So come in close because we're going to get started on these tacos. Depending on where you live, you might not always have access to amazing corn tortillas. I find that most of the store-bought tortillas tend to be a little bit more humid and they don't taste as good as the one in Mexico. We'll just say that. So what I like to do is I wanna make sure that I dry my tortilla out. I wanna take out as much moisture as I can, so I cook it on each side about 30 seconds. Sometimes it might take you a little bit longer if you live in a humid area. So the goal here is to take as much of the moisture as we can out of these tortillas. And that's gonna be the first step to amazing and perfectly made quesabirria crispy tacos. You see that steam coming out? That's the moisture leaving that tortilla. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue to warm our tortillas up and next we're gonna assemble our tacos. You're gonna dip the tip of your tortilla in your broth in here, just like your taquero would, just like that. That's gonna give us enough oil to crisp up our tacos. Tacos, tacos, tomato, tomato, it's all the same. It depends on who you're talking to. You know, Cloud's over here serenading Anita Baker to me while we're cooking Cut in the background. In the <laughs> yeah, in the background, and it's just, ah, uh, it's gonna be so delicious today. It's gonna be one of those days. And you guys know I like to pack these tacos and make them thick, super juicy, just for you. Because nothing can compare. Nothing compares to this taco. <laughs> it's been three years and a few minutes since I made you guys this delicious birria. <laughs> yeah, right. We, we have, we've been making it nonstop. So go ahead and fold it to your best abilities. From Little Mermaid. <laughs> no, you do not. Oh my gosh, that seagull is beautiful. All right, once you get that little crispiness, you're gonna flip it over. Oh, que delicia. No, esto le vamos a dar serenata que estos tacos. Yo sé bien que estoy afuera. Pero el día que yo me muera. You can add a little bit more of your oil right here. Make it look very sexy. This is the sexiest taco in the whole world. Just like your tia cob. <laughs> hey. Pulling <laughs> out because my sister and I tend to get on everybody's nerves when we do that. But we're just, we're just happy. Giggly. We're a joyful lady. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go back at it again. Da, 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 da. Oh, that, that one came out better, don't you think? Yeah, you did a good job. Hey, 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 don't be getting scared of weight. Get so old, gonna burn ants over there. They're gonna stay there. Leave them. Leave them. Para la suegra. I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. You had to. You had to. I had to do it. You had to do it. Whoa. Qué rico. Oh, that one came out better. Oh, And boom, done, we're ready to eat. And now you can top with a little bit of onions and cilantro. And for those of you that like the lime flavor, you can add some lime. Put a little bit of lime on your tortilla, a little bit of salt, 
Roll it up. Dip it. And I'm gonna need somebody very, no, that's not the bite you guys want, hold on. And there's nothing we love more than a quesadilla taco. It's hot, so be careful. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... And now it's time for us to enjoy dipping our birria quesa tacos and just indulging in this delicious dish. Mm. You were so right about the crunch. They do stay crispy. You have to make sure to take out all the humidity from your tortilla and you're set. Wow. Medicine in a bowl. Mm-hmm. If I got dirty, I'm so sorry. It had to happen today. Now look away because it's about to get really dangerous for me here. Yeah, right. You're going to take a nap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Straight to bed. It has a buttery flavor and it's just so well seasoned that I don't even know what's in here and I made it. <laughs> mm. Wow. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope that you enjoyed today's birria recipe. I hope that it helps you shine with your family and loved ones. And I also want to personally thank each and every one of you for your kindness yesterday. Sometimes these comments get to be too aggressive. And in all honesty, I'm here to cook. I'm here to show you how to shine and how to make your way in home cooking. And on that one, I want you guys to make sure to subscribe, comment, and like, and share with everybody because it seems YouTube isn't recommending us too much. And if you guys want us to stay on this platform, we're going to need your help. So go ahead and subscribe, share with everybody. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.